in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed in matthew chapter 25 just write it for reference when we read from verse 14 down to 30 matthew 25 the parable of the talents the bible says that the kingdom of god is like a man who went to his servants and delivered goods to them and then the bible says he gave unto one five talents two and one please pay attention and that in giving them he left them and the one who had five talents increased it to ten the one who had two talents doubled it and increased it to four the one who had a single talent went and buried it and when the man would come back to demand accountability he said what did you do with what i gave you and for the one with five received the reward the one with two received the reward and then the one with only one he said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you did not sow and so i thought instead of um doing this and that and that let me go and bury it here is your one talent he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant it is not enough to have financial resources you must know how to build and to increase that is why many of us continue to receive the blessings of the lord through your job through a business and yet we do not increase because we do not understand that increase is a law increase is not just something you do in business there is a law that brings increase second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 10 blessed be the name of the lord second corinthians 9 and verse 10 let me teach you something powerful now this is how money works this is the principle that helps you to distribute your financial resources for growth and for multiplication. Please pay attention. The principle that I'm about to share with you right now is what will help you distribute financial resources to ensure growth and multiplication. Here's what the Bible says. Now, he that ministered seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food. And what should he do? He should multiply your seed sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. Four very important words here. Number one, bread. Number two, seed. Number three, multiply. Number four, increase in one verse. That God can minister seed to the sower. Please say after me, seed. Then say bread. One more time, say seed. Don't be tired. Say bread. bread. That means for every, when God blesses you with financial resources, in every increase and every blessing that God gives you, whether it comes as a salary, whether it comes as profits from a business, whether it comes as a one-off show of favor, in it, there is always seed and there is bread. Everybody say seed, seed. and say bread. bread. Now watch this. The assignment of bread is to satisfy your current need the assignment of seed is to make sure you are not hungry tomorrow i repeat the assignment of bread is to satisfy your current need the assignment of seed is to make sure tomorrow there will still be food if you sow your bread you wasted it if you eat your seed you are going to lose god is that benevolent that out of every money he sends your way there is bread for today and there is seed for tomorrow when they cried the nation of israel cried for hunger god did not send seeds what did he send bread because they needed to eat it immediately now here is what most people do 
and I want to observe this respectfully speaking most of our elderly ones people within the ages of say 80 down to say maybe 70 60 that generation focused so much on seed and they forgot bread that means they focused they were so futuristic about securing the destiny of children and children's children that they forgot today there are many people is until they die you see how much they are worth now the children discover that this man who died had properties that he bought around but while he was alive there were times in that house they did not have food to eat he did not know that out of all the monies that god brings there is bread and there is seed he carried both bread and seed and sowed it into the future and now people were hungry and he himself did not benefit from the blessing of the lord upon his life and then you value one or two plots of land or one or two hectares of land and you find out that he left a total of 100 million and yet that same house children could not go to good schools that same house nobody had the opportunity to advance that was a mistake now our generation of young people our mistake is that we do not understand seed what we understand is bread are you getting it now so let tomorrow go places we eat both bread and seed today and then you find out someone who is supposed to be blessed today becomes a pauper and a beggar tomorrow overnight because they were bread conscious and not seed conscious are you learning something tonight that there was a generation that focused on seed and ignored bread you would find people who never built a house by themselves yet they had their assets and everything was in millions nobody benefited from their money not the kingdom not them not their children until they died and then you have people who come to claim the inheritance who have no basis coming to that family because they were focused on the future it is only when you are alive that you can get to the future god is that benevolent to bring bread for today and seed for tomorrow but when you have a generation that also as a revenge mission i won't suffer my father he has done his own he has gone me i will enjoy my life now let me tell you this let me tell you this remember this is a deliverance service let me tell you this if you think like that you will be naked tomorrow it is painful to taste of the wealth and the prosperity of of this kingdom and then tomorrow you go back and have a worse tomorrow than your yesterday the path of the just should always be as a shining light are we together so everything god gives you when god gives you money for some of you from this month when you collect salary or when you collect some profit whatever it is or just someone just decides to bless you as you hold that money I want you to remember the law of increase increase is not just something you do through business it is a law that what you are holding in your hand there is seed and there is bread there is a part of it that is for tomorrow and there is a part of it that is for today you must be honest enough to be fair on yourself with the bread that is for today but you must also be disciplined enough to allow the one that should get into tomorrow to get tomorrow let me tell you this if you were to meet your accountant and ask him please i need a total of every money that has entered my bank account from when i opened it you will repent for one year for the kind of wastage you will sit down and say i can't imagine that hundred million has passed through this account one billion has passed through this account but no house no car no education where did it go to i will tell you you ate both seed and bread is god speaking to us don't say apostle all that i earn is just fifty thousand. what will it do every seed is small there is no seed that is a tree there is no seed that is as big as my hand god gave you favor january this year an uncle just blessed you and gave you one million what did you do you forgot god you forgot your future you forgot everything and you just said look i've suffered let me just let me let me do justice to myself 
Now, don't feel bad. I'm not condemning you. Can I tell you this? Please, you must obtain grace from God tonight to be disciplined enough to fight and reject the temptation. Anybody who advises you, whether as friends and an association, oh, it's my birthday, I have to spend it the way. Who said that? Why don't you take the time now and let your seed prepare a befitting birthday for you? Are we together? There are people you see, I'm, I don't mean to insult you, but there are people who all they have in their account, home and abroad, is 500,000. Yet you will see them in a hotel where billionaires are. The billionaires have assets that pay for their liabilities. So they can spend 100,000 in a moment. Somebody who owns an airline can be there having a business discussion. They can spend 1 million right there because there are people queuing up to return the money at the airport. They are not stupid people. And then you find someone in their midst who are we together God is speaking to us the house of God is a place of wisdom can I tell you this listen please look up have the courage to look at friends look at everybody to say look I like this idea but I may not have the budget for this for now I will note it and when I am ready they will look at you and are you saying that NMPC job you are working in? Don't fall our hand. Don't do this. Can I tell you, summon the courage to let them know you have mental prosperity. Mental prosperity. There are people who would have been house owners in this city if only they knew how to eat bread and sow seeds. Is that true? I don't mean to insult you and please forgive me if you think I do. But there are people who have spent 10 years, 20 years, 30 years in Abuja here. They don't have one land. As at the time, land was 500,000 in some places, 50,000. They watched it go from 1 million to 5 million to 10 million to 20 million. There are people today. As at the time they got their houses, the surrounding lands were less than maybe one million. They watched people come and today the only thing they have is a little, maybe, maybe half plot. And they had the money. How about people who can borrow 10 million or 20 million or 40 million to buy a jeep and be paying it with salary and then somebody now comes to hit that jeep and they tell you the shock absorber alone will buy you kekena pep <laughs> are you seeing the mistakes that we're making please take seriously what i'm saying we keep making very wrong decisions because we do not know that for everything god trusts you with in that ten thousand, there is bread and there is seed if you don't respect the seed in the 10,000, 1 million will never come. Is someone learning? For some of us, by reason of this message, you will go and open an account like I teach the students and refuse to collect the ATM from the bank. Let that be the account where your seed. Apostle, what do I do with it? Just make sure it is there first. Don't worry about what to do with it. many of us have had the privilege do you know there are people in this nation who have had the honor and the privilege of meeting others who said look my house is valued at 30 million but i'm i'm relocating to america if you have five million take and they could not take an offer because all the seeds god said keep because of these days of favor you ignored it and you were eating it and now a house of 30 million that will be given to you five million but because you ate both bread and seed can i tell you this don't regret the mistakes you made yesterday start now make up your mind and discipline yourself to start now for everything god gives you every financial resource god gives you there is bread and there is seed are we together bread is for today seed is for tomorrow practice savings practice savings when god blesses you take out your tithe believe in tithing 
ten percent and then take out your seed many people recommend 20 percent of whatever you have so that you save it i told the school of ministry students you can save 20 percent of your income if you have time what is pursuing you is what determines how you run is that true if a chicken is pursuing you you can run carelessly but if a lion is pursuing you you will run with the energy of an athlete so if you know you have made mistakes and now at at 40 at age 40 you are saving 20 percent of your income you will not go far when you are talking to a child of 13 14 years you can tell him to start saving 10 20 percent but i'm telling you if you really 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 want to make progress financially you must practice the law of increase and then learn to save save there are two basic reasons why we save number one for emergencies number two for investment write it down in another series we'll take our time to deal with it there are only two reasons why we save money number one for emergencies number two for investments by the way you may want to write this down the only way money multiplies is through investments there is no other way the only way money multiplies is through investments what is investment acquisition of assets that is for another series wealthy people never take on any liability and expenditure until they can show the assets that will pay for it they spend their lives acquiring the assets that pay for their liabilities so when you meet a wealthy man and you say daddy i want to celebrate birthday he will not just carry one million and give you he will check from all his investments which one will pay for that liability if there is no investment that pays for it he will be patient that is the economy of the wealthy the only way money grows ladies and gentlemen please hear me investments in another series we may not have time to teach that now but it is important for you to know that the law of increase is very important you need to experience increase not just the arrival of financial resources almost everybody here with decent planning no matter what level you can put something together while you are praying lord open doors of favor for me but then you are practicing your savings and you are putting something down god can now open a door for you and then you have abundant financial resources every time you spend everything you have know that your future is crying every time you spend everything you have you just punished your future practice frugality the absence of wastage justifiable expenditures be frugal especially where you are rising there are people who can afford to be you know uh, quite um, luxurious with their lives because they have paid the price to build systems that can replenish where you are starting and where you are rising you must be frugal can i be honest with you you know that you are really making progress financially when people underestimate your real worth because you reduce yourself many levels below your true worth so that you can grow people should not be able to look at you and estimate and say you are 10 million you are 1 billion you are 500 million you are 200 million you are 500 thousand no you should leave many layers below your true worth as a sacrifice to truly get to the wealthy place that is the philosophy of wealthy people a man may make may be a millionaire and yet you still see him living a modest life being frugal the day you see him acting as if he's a millionaire he has become a billionaire since so if you join him just because you made one or two million i hope you know a millionaire is not who, one who has one million or two million no a millionaire is one who has relationships that can maintain that level 
intelligence that can maintain that level systems and structures that can replenish at that level and then financial resources that is at least 10 million if not you are not a millionaire so you see all this philosophy of 1 million or 1.5 and we say we are millionaires then we say we have made it and then we crash back to 100,000 again as a punishment for not learning we start again and we repeat the same mistake life is a brutal teacher it will teach you as many times as you need to learn painful teaching tonight but a profitable one are we learning the law of increase for the sake of this series the next time we're going to look at the law of relation and then we'll look at the law of investments and you'll be learning that investment is not just about money like prosperity there are five levels of investment spiritual investment mental investment investment in your body and financial investment and then we'll be learning how to store wealth it's one thing to have so much but you must know how to store it the bible says strong men retain wealth there are people who have risen to one billion billions and 10 years after they crash back to the point that they cannot bring 200,000. it's a terrible life that's not god's design for us it is the reason why in africa we do not perpetuate wealth because it starts and ends with us you start from zero naira you rise to one billion by the end of your life you're minus one your children start they balance up that to zero and start again it's not supposed to be so the bible says a good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children not his children you must be two generations ahead that's how you measure your success a quick recap number one the law of mental transformation number two the law of value are we still here number three the law of productivity number four the law of increase now we're wrapping up please pay attention this is a very sensitive moment now i'll have to end here for this series but i want to end by showing you that in this kingdom we have an advantage there is the prophetic dimension of wealth you may not learn this in a business seminar but it is true there is an advantage that we have in this kingdom we are not helpless there is the prophetic dimension of wealth we're about to pray this is very important in second chronicles chapter 20 when you read from verse 20 to 25 the story of jehoshaphat and judah when they were attacked by three nations that came in unity to fight them second chronicles chapter 20 we'll begin to read from verse 20 please let's hurry up for time the bible says and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of tekoa pay attention now and as they went forth jehoshaphat stood and said hear me o judah koinonia god is speaking and ye inhabitants of jerusalem believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established believe his prophets so shall ye prosper not just believe the business you are doing not just believe that your mind is transformed there is an advantage that i build in my economy for the saints in light are we together by the time you read down to 25 the people began to kill themselves and then all they came and they saw dead bodies there and the bible says jehoshaphat and the people they could not take the spoils away why will people carry gold to war because god wanted to use a prophetic dimension and give it to his people believers hear me the prophetic dimension of wealth is not a license for laziness it's a system of advantage incorporated in god's economy to prove to creation that there is a god that backs the saints are we together hosea chapter 12 and verse 13 very quickly and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt egypt is a place of captivity and by a prophet was he preserved 
in second kings chapter 7 from verse 1 just write it down you don't have we are not we don't have the time to read it elisha said this was a famine in in samaria i'm showing you how territories were restored through the prophetic hear ye the word of the lord thus saith the lord tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of samaria this is prophecy when there was famine the economists were still there when there was famine the business people were still there can i tell you there are times when your fishing will not bring fish it is not that your net is not good it is not that your skill is not good it is that there are powers that can stop the fish from coming there at that time you don't just need business acumen you need a prophetic advantage are we together in luke chapter 5 luke chapter 5 let's read that very quickly from verse 1 and it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of god he stood by the lake of gennesaret uh-huh and he saw two sheep standing by the lake but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets what were they washing so they were valuable they had boats they had nets they were productive are we together now oh there are times they were responsible and transformed enough to go for fishing there are times that mental transformation can be limited there are times that your value can be limited there are times that your skill you are as productive as you can but because we live in a realm that is spiritual you will need jesus and he entered into one of the ships which was simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of them now when he had left speaking he said to simon i show you the prophetic dimension of wealth launch out into the deep i don't care what it is that you have done i know your economic principles say it is until december it says in in two months you cannot be blessed but this one i respect your net i respect your boat i respect your transformation but i am jesus launch out into the deep and let down your net for a drought hallelujah here's what simon said master we have toiled all night we are not lazy we are valuable we are productive we've been doing this for a long time but the pandemic just came and all our skills and the company the company is still in place but there is no profit he said nevertheless oh there is a nevertheless in a believer's equation are you hearing me in a believer's equation it is not one plus one that is two economically speaking one plus one is two but there are times demons can change that two into zero so you are doing one plus one but your answer is not becoming two and jesus says step out now this is not economy this is the prophetic if you don't understand this dimension your wisdom will be limited this is where the fallacy of people ignoring god comes in ignoring the prophetic ministry after 10 years of excelling they will plunge down signed satan and simon answering said master we have toiled all night we have taken nothing nevertheless at thy word i will let down the net what happened verse 6 when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break they had never caught this kind of miracle let me tell you what the prophetic can do i believe in investments where you can be patient for 10 20 years and god will lift you i believe you can buy build houses and then be paying the rent break even after three five years but believe us we are not alone in this journey there is the prophetic dimension that can push a man overnight i repeat it is not a license for laziness that is why i taught you these other laws before introducing this dimension the mistake with we men of god in the body of christ is that we ignore all of this and we just tell people there is a prophetic dimension and there is so as they receive they become lazy they refuse to contend for transformation they refuse to contend to be valuable they refuse to be productive they refuse to master relationships they refuse to invest why because they know that at any time I can come 
But hear me, God did not bring you tonight just to learn economics. This is the house of God. Mysteriously, mysteriously, this house sustains the power of God to change lives and to transform even people's finances by the power of the prophetic. I am a product of these principles alongside the prophetic ministry. When the prophetic ministry is administered out of disalignment to scripture, it will destroy, it will produce imbalances. But when the prophetic ministry is administered within the boundary of scripture and then balanced by these principles, it can work wonders in a man's life. There is something called prepared blessings in this kingdom where Joseph can be sitting down and God can make Pharaoh. Joseph, you can interpret dreams, but your value cannot make Pharaoh call you. It takes an agency from heaven to make Pharaoh want to see you. I took my time to pray over the things that I'm about to declare. Let me wrap up tonight before we pray. Let me define for you what is the power to get wealth based on everything I've said. What then is the power to get wealth? Never forget this definition. Two definitions I will give you. Number one, the power to get wealth is an engracing by the Holy Spirit upon an individual upon an organization and engracing by the Holy Spirit upon an individual upon an organization that number one attracts to the life of that individual people opportunities and resources we're, we're defining the power to get wealth and engracing from the Holy Spirit that can come upon the life of an individual and it works like a magnet attracting to your life people the ministry of men attracting to your life opportunities attracting to your life resources number two the power to get wealth is an empowerment upon an individual or an organization to provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men to provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men leading to all kinds of rewards principally financial rewards an empowerment upon an individual an empowerment upon a family an empowerment upon a business an empowerment upon an organization a ministry to provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men comma leading to all kinds of results honor influence principally financial rewards this is the power to get wealth so when the bible says god gives men the power to get wealth he places a grace upon their lives that can attract to their space people resources and opportunities and then he engraces the people to provide extraordinary solutions that will lead to all kinds of results rewards even financial rewards i have an assignment as we wrap up this series is our first financial series officially in this ministry it won't be the last there are many other dimensions to cover by the grace of god i'm committed to communicating the whole counsel of god but hear me truly i tell you there is a prophetic dimension of wealth i have worked in keeping with the laws of transformation i have worked in keeping with the laws of value the laws of productivity and all the other laws but many instances in my life i've had the honor and the privilege to receive a prophetic push and i can tell you the wonder that this did in my life we're wrapping up this is a very sensitive moment please pay attention please pay attention in matthew chapter 10 and verse 41 you want the prophetic to work for you you have to know how the prophetic works it says he that receives a prophet 
in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward and he that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward I don't have the time to begin to tell you different experiences in my life and in this ministry where God granted the grace to provoke the prophetic and when the prophetic came it took us to different levels of the blessings of the Lord can I tell you believers I know that many people have suffered manipulation from men of God imbalances from men of God but I love you too much and I fear God too much to not teach you the truth these truths you have learned the spiritual laws and part of this physical laws are irrefutable but the prophetic advantage comes into the life of a believer listen carefully to be able to lift you and to bless you there are two keys that provoke the operation of the prophetic please write it down and never forget the prophetic does not just work arbitrarily there are two keys that activate the operation of the prophetic number one honor honor to God and honor to the prophetic vessel that will speak over your life you cannot dishonor God and dishonor his mouthpiece and prosper by the anointing that comes from that mouthpiece now sometimes men of God use this sadly to bully people into you know just trying to manipulate people for respect that may be wrong but I'm telling you when you dishonor God and you dishonor his anointed you will never truly be able to receive number two the second way you provoke the prophetic to work for you is through the power of sacrifice Psalm 50 verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice you can't imagine how I've struggled to come and teach this prophetic dimension but because I cannot my mind I will not even be able to sleep knowing that I did not open you up to this dimension behind the mysterious prosperity you see of men and women whether in the kingdom or even in the secular accelerated wealth that just came into people there was a prophetic push and it came at the instance of honor and at the instance of a sacrifice I'm going to be speaking over your life I'm going to be declaring over you but let me tell you this for the first time in koinonia I'm going to be challenging you tonight to stand in partnership with the Lord and agree with God what sacrifice that you are going to give with understanding to break out of any financial circle of limitation and retrogression years of, of poverty and yokes of darkness listen if you don't believe what I'm teaching and what I'm saying please do not do it just listen to what I'm telling you you are absolutely at liberty to ignore what I'm telling you but if it is the kingdom and it is prosperity you desire whether you are following online or listening to me there are companies there are families there are individuals like Peter you have tried all night the truth is that you have taken out time to transform yourself you have bought books you've gone to school you've had seminars there are others who have you are valuable others you are productive you've done your best but there are times when your net may not catch any fish there are times when your boat can take you to the river but the net will not catch any fish at that point you need the prophetic when the pandemic came people lost money people lost businesses hear me if I stand here as a man of God to lie to you to manipulate you may a curse be upon me forever for the rest of my life I fear God too much and God has shown us too much mercy to stand here 
and face you inside outside all the overflows and the thousands and potentially millions of people across the globe following i fear god too much to do that but also i love you too much to look beyond my reputation and teach you the truth i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching